uh, if you're studying Minhagim of Tisha B'Av, let's talk in the past, the Rambam Tisha B'Av is fundamentally different from that which, let's say, you'll find in common practice, starting with the tour, Rosh, Shulchan Aruch, basically everybody. Why? Well, what's different? Rambam says, what's a fast day? A fast day is basically like a Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is Minatoro. The other fast days are Durabanan. And what are you supposed to do on a fast day? The Rambam says, really, a mitzvah de Raisa is to cry out, sound the shofar, pray to God. That's what you're supposed to do in times of trouble. And trouble could take many forms. And also, we have these four fast days that are basically now a universal Jewish practice to observe. Uh, and we treat those as though they are basically Yom Kippur. All, all the fast days are basically the same. We have Slichis and uh, Seyavinu Malkinu. Really, we're supposed to be repenting on those fast days. That's the way the Rambam has it. And Tisha B'Av is no exception, except that more is forbidden on Tisha B'Av. It's sort of in the model of Yom Kippur and also in the model of, let's say, the more extreme fasts that the Beistin has to do in case of, let's say, drought. Uh, when the Beistin uh, enacts fast days on Bahab, for example, because of drought, so the first few fasts are mild. They're, you know, you could eat at night. They're just day fasts. There's no Isra Malacha. And as things start to get worse or if there's no improvement happens, so the fasts are more extreme. And there's Isur Malacha, and then they start saying the other Inuyim. Tisha B'Av, from the outset, has the inu, Inuyim that Yom Kippur enjoys also. But Tisha B'Av, the way the Rambam has it, you can't find that he says, by the way, and the Minog is you're supposed to sit down and say the keynote. And in the Rambam's term, probably keynote would be, of course, what we call Echa. And we've added, keynote means lamentations, like it's called in English. And we have added our own liturgy over many thousands of years now of additional keynote that are said at night and by day. And as a matter of fact, that's, that's what most people do. But what do you not see on Tisha B'Av? This is, not, this is something that was introduced much, much later. Tisha B'Av is called the Mo'ed. So no Tachanun. And also midrashically, midrashically Satham Tefilathi. With a sin, not a not a samich. So God closed up the the opportunity to pray. So in years past, Tish Abba was treated as what a day where you just fast and you know you cry. But all the slicha mechila v'chapara aspect, viduim tachanunim, that's missing from Tish Abba Av in basically the standard practice. Instead, most people are just saying kinoth, which is strange. In the Rambam's book, literally in in his book, like right here, the Sefer a Sefer Zmanim. You would think that Tisha B'Av, yes, there's more to from which to abstain than on a regular fast, but the aspect that you should treat it like a small Yom Kippur, that's that's still there. So I think the I think we're actually missing an opportunity. I would think, let's say, if Tisha B'Av, uh, let's say, in the, we've been at the Kotel Plaza. Remember last year, you were there. Also two years straight, we were at the Kotel Plaza on the, on the day, morning of Tisha B'Av. I think I saw you there. So I was there too. We were davening chakras. And instead, everybody sits down and says, keynote. I would have rather what they should have done is massive prayer and tachanunim. That's really missing on Tisha B'Av. Can you imagine if there was a Shloshis being said? It would be a lot more powerful. I think that Tisha B'Av should be treated as such. It has so happened that since my grandmother's uh, passing on uh, the 8th of Av, 2000 and Seven, no, 2006. It was Tufshin Samich My grandmother passed away on the 8th of Av. Her funeral was Tisha B'Av. So I missed uh, basically the kinnis that morning in Shul because we had the funeral to do. It was boiling hot that day. And uh, I have never had the opportunity really to say the keynote since coming to Eretz Royal. I mean, I've been there. I've been at the hotel when they're doing it, but I've always been doing other things. I think that the Kinoth are much more powerful instead of just crying about, let's say, the destruction of the temple and how it's Bidei Zarim to actually go to the temple and see how terrible it was. As you know, many of those years, the times I went and saw, I, I was in disguise, I went with Christian groups and saw how the Jews who made it on were being treated. It was a, it's, it's a difference between reading medieval poetry describing the destruction and actually living the destruction. So... That's what I've done. And thank God, the past few years, we've actually gone up and had a chance to pray on Tisha B'Av. And then I come back down, and I've, you know, heard, read the Torah, the Torah on, on Tisha B'Av at the Kutel Plaza, and then come back here for, you know, the usual things. 
I'm hoping this year will change. I'm really hoping. But the problem is, you know, we're already assuming that th think we haven't seen much improvement right now politically. I, I would hope that there's a political movement to rebuild the temple. Instead, what are we seeing? Narish kite. Right. So that's a uh, that's just my take. I think that I think the Rambam would tell us uh, to do something different. I'm, I'm saying if the Rambam were here, perhaps he would tell us, you know, what to do.